In a world where the sun shines without fail every day, suddenly everything goes dark. This is Lincoln, Nebraska. Before there was a Lincoln, or a Nebraska, or a United States, or a continent called North America, 50 years before Christopher Columbus is said to have discovered the New World. Maybe a few Native Americans of the Pawnee or Oto nations were here in 1442 to see the last time a total eclipse of the sun passed through what is now Lincoln, Nebraska. So we've been waiting a long time for this. A total eclipse is finally coming soon to a sky near you. The center line of the eclipse, where the moon completely covers the sun for the longest period of time, is actually south of Lincoln. It passes just north of Beatrice, where the total eclipse will last 2 minutes and 37 seconds. But nearly everyone in Lincoln will be able to see the total eclipse. At Hyde Observatory, we'll have just a hair less than a minute and a half of totality. The farther south in the city that you are, the longer the period of totality. About the longest anyone in Lincoln will see the sun covered completely by the moon is a minute and 51 seconds. If you want longer than that, go to the center line. Remember, this eclipse is visible all across the United States, from Oregon on the Pacific coast all the way to South Carolina on the Atlantic. But Nebraska will offer some of the best chances of clear skies, and thousands of people from all over the United States and the world are planning to be here. So, we've established that total solar eclipses are pretty rare. But why is that? Because the moon can only be between the Earth and the sun, possibly catching us in its shadow once about every 29 and a half days. But the moon's orbit doesn't line it up perfectly between the Earth and the sun every time, because it's tilted by five degrees. Most of the time, the moon's shadow misses the Earth by going above it or below it. That reduces the chances to just twice each year, six months apart. But not even all of those chances work out, because the moon's orbit isn't perfectly circular. That means sometimes it's farther away from us than others, and if it happens to be far enough away that we see it too small to cover the sun completely, leaving a bright ring or annulus of sun around it, that's not a total solar eclipse. It's called an annular eclipse. Annular-like eclipses happen all the time in the solar system when a planet's moon is too small to cover the sun. The Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars watched Mars's largest moon, Phobos, as it eclipsed the sun. Phobos is only about 14 miles across, compared to our moon at over 2,100 miles. But Mars is farther from the sun than Earth, so the sun appears much smaller. And Phobos orbits Mars much closer than our moon does to Earth. Bottom line, Phobos covers about a third of the sun. It can never deliver a total eclipse for Mars. Oh, and as you can see, Phobos isn't round like our moon because it's probably an asteroid captured by Mars. The shadow that our moon casts on the Earth's surface isn't very wide. The 2017 eclipse shadow is about 65 miles wide as it crosses Nebraska. Not only that, but the center of the moon's shadow travels fast. It will enter the United States in Oregon at 12.16 p.m. our time. It gets to Alliance, Nebraska a little more than a half an hour later at 12.49, and it reaches Lincoln at 1.02. It will exit the United States off the South Carolina coast at 1.49 p.m. our time. So, Back to Lincoln. What will we see here? Starting at about 11.37 a.m., the moon will begin taking a bite out of the sun. The partial eclipse begins. The bite keeps getting bigger and bigger. 
A little past 1.02 p.m., the last of the sun disappears behind the moon. The last light of the sun, shining between two mountains or a crater rim on the moon, slowly vanishes. That's called the diamond ring effect. When it completely disappears, that's your signal that you can look directly at the eclipse with no protection for your eyes. During totality, it grows dark enough that birds might begin to roost. In the sky, we see a bright, wispy structure around the moon. That's the solar corona, the sun's atmosphere. It's only visible during a total solar eclipse, and its appearance is different every time because the sun's atmosphere shifts around as it fights gravity in the solar wind. With a telescope or binoculars, we might see reddish prominences rising along the sun's rim, hidden by the dark limb of the moon. These are great expulsions of heated gas that blow up from the sun's surface along magnetic lines and then rain back down, occasionally escaping into space. During totality, we can look directly at the sun without protective glasses. In fact, solar glasses and filters cut out so much of the sun's light that during an eclipse, you can't see anything through them, not the corona or the prominences. They aren't bright enough to get through. You must look at the sun with your unprotected eye. But when the first fragment of the diamond ring appears again, the slightest hint that the eclipse is nearing the end of totality, you have to go back to protecting your eyes or look away. The smallest bit of direct sunlight can permanently burn the retinas of your eyes. The total eclipse in Lincoln will end about 1.04 p.m. and the moon will completely leave the sun, that is the partial eclipse will end at almost precisely 2.30 p.m. So how do you prepare for an eclipse? You can see the eclipse from your own backyard in Lincoln. You don't have to go anywhere. In fact, keep in mind that anywhere you go to see the eclipse with a lot of other people, it's going to take time for all those people to get back to where they started. That includes the thousands of visitors, most of whom don't know where they're going. The closer you are to the center line, the longer the duration of totality, over two and a half minutes south of Lincoln. Now that doesn't mean the eclipse will look any better there or any different. You'll just have maybe a minute more to appreciate it. Before and after totality, you'll need solar filter glasses or some other form of protection for your eyes. Mylar film eclipse glasses work well, but be sure that they have no punctures or imperfections. Number 14 welder's glass works too, but be sure it's number 14, not a lighter shade, and be sure, again, there are no cracks, no scratches or imperfections in the glass. Regular sunglasses won't protect your eyes during the partial phase of the eclipse. And unless you have certified filters, you can't look at the partial eclipse with binoculars or a telescope. Any time you look at the sun, except during the total solar eclipse, you must have protection. The lens of your eye can focus a sliver of light from the sun onto your retina and scorch it. Because retinas have no pain receptors, you can damage your vision without even feeling it happen. So don't take a chance. Blindness is permanent. You can follow the partial eclipse lead up to and lead out of totality with a pinhole projector. Use a pin to make a hole in a card and hold the card between the sun and a piece of paper with you facing safely away from the sun. Project the image onto the paper on the ground. You're not missing anything. You wouldn't see more than the moon's silhouette against the sun if you were looking straight at it. When totality begins, remember it's going to be around 1 p.m. The sun will be almost straight up in the sky. You'll want to be lying down, not standing up craning your neck. So have something comfortable that you can recline in or on. Another reason why your own backyard might be your best bet. This is a once in a lifetime event. For Lincoln, 
it'll be hundreds of years before it happens again. So, mark your calendar and begin planning. Monday, August 21st, 2017, 102 p.m., when the world goes dark.